Hey y'all, if you're like me and you're on the edge of 1999, then you're pretty excited for the update. And one of the coolest parts of the update has got to be the proto frames. Like, don't get me wrong, they're all pretty cool, but like, Nyx, Trinity, really? I want to try to make these frames as good as possible and have unique and fun builds for each of them for when the update drops. So, obviously Quincy is not included. Go back to BTD6 or something. Before we start, do the YouTube thing if you like these bad videos so I know to make more bad videos. First up is Arthur Excalibur, and now, hot take, Excalibur isn't that good. Oh, hey, brother, shut, this hey, hey, shut, shut the- shut, 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 the, shut the fuck up! Excalibur is not as good as he once used to be, and honestly, I'd say he's the worst of the starters now, which is crazy to think about. And that's mostly just because Exalted Blade is worse than normal melee right now. It's sad, but true! You might have noticed I have subsumed over Exalted Blade, and that is because this build is really dumb. Instead of building Excalibur around his 4, we're going to just build around normal melee weapons, using Furious Javelin to super buff our normal melee, and using a Helmet to buff our melee even more. Depending on exactly what you're using, you either want to use Zara's or Roar. An important thing to note for this build is Warrior's Rest is actually important. If you don't have this, whenever you press 5, Umbra will turn off your Helmet abilities. Probably because if you give him time to think for himself, he is still sad about his son or some lame shit like that. Other than that, this build is pretty self-explanatory. Good duration, good strength, arcane strike to make melee attack faster, augmented for more strength, adaptation is enough to not die when you combine it with the blind. Because this is just general melee buffing, you could use any good melee, and I have a couple examples. First is the Corum using melee influence blast. Because the Corum has force electricity on its special unique attack we don't need to mod on electricity so then we can mod on blast and then when you combine blast with a bane and zada's whisper it triple di it like quadruple dips it's insane it does so much dumb shit another unique melee option is the nami solo using these incarnon perks this build is built around just only using heavy attack. We have melee crescendo to build up a high initial base combo. And because of the way heavy attacks work, even if you're at a max initial combo, it still takes time for your combo to build up, which is why we have reflex coil. But with this machete stance, you'd have a force slash proc and the heavy attack is you just spin in a circle. So. With Dispatch, we go really fast, and we're just spinning a lot, and just doing big 4 slash procs. Your other weapons don't really matter, although I would suggest using Dexterity Arcanes. Companion also doesn't matter, I'm just using this cute cat dog th uh, thing for more loot. Next up is... Ah! And the dumb build we're going to be using is Blender Mag. This build, you either use Well of Life or Blood Altar to have an enemy be invincible and then use your two on that invincible enemy. And this is important because once you kill the enemy that you target your two with, it stops pulling in other enemies. So if we have the Magatized target be invincible, we will just have a really big bubble that is just constantly pulling in enemies. And using Magnetized Discharge, the range gets really really big and then we are going to be using a gas nataruk to just fill the bubble with death For Nerd Emoji over here, we're not going to be doing a generic Terrify and Discharge setup, we're going to be using a generic Melee Influence setup. Wow, so original. Shock Trooper allows us to get electricity on our melee weapon without needing to mod it on, although important thing to note is you cannot have an, uh, a spare element that electricity will combine with or else it will combine, so if you have just Toxin on, 
Chalk Chipper will make it corrosive, so you need to have something that it won't combine with to have the raw electricity that is needed for melee influence. That is until Pablo changes this. Thank you, Pablo. God bless Pablo. We love you, Pablo. The rest of the build is pretty self-explanatory adaptation and capacitance to not die. For the melee weapon, I'm going to be using an Inadem with this setup. And that's just because the Inadem is pretty good. Again, we're going to be using Blast with Zada's Whisper and a Bane to do funny numbers. An important thing to note is because I'm using a dagger, the best primary for me to use is the Argonac with Amalgam Argonac Metal Auger. And that is because this gets spread by melee influence. It's not a lot of armor stripping, but it's some, so that's nice. Now for female Excalibur, I'm going to be using the exact same build I used in this video, and that is because, as far as I know, this is still actually the best way to play Nyx, which is unfortunate because I don't like it. This strategy is using Wrathful Advance to move around because during Absorb Assimilate, you are super slow. So we're going to be using a good heavy attack melee, and just heavy attacking everything with Wrathful Advance, while Absorb makes us invincible. The weapon I'm going to be using is Ceramic Dagger, with these perks. I am not using Melee Crescendo, because we're going to be heavy attacking so much, we don't have enough time for it to get all the way to max. So instead, Melee Exposure will give us some corrosive damage on top. So because we need 100 primary kills, you need to bring a good primary weapon, and I will use the Tena Archiplasmor for the showcase. So first, you get 100 kills with your primary. Now that I got 100 kills, knife time. And as you can see by the fact that life support is going down, this setup is just worse than using the Tenna Archiplasm. For Pablo's mom, we're in the Simulacrum, and we're going to show off probably the stupidest build in this video, and that is this. What's happening is Energy Vampire is doing percent damage based on the target's health as true damage to them. With Viral, the damage they are taking is being doubled, so they are taking double 59% of their health as true damage. This value is actually more because of Augmented and Matter Eye. We are then taking that percent true damage they are taking and doing it in an aura with Mark for Death. Now, it is important that we are going above 100% on both of these because the even though the target will take true damage, Mark for Death is not doing true damage, so it will be resisted by armor, which is why we need more strength. This is the build, and... It's pretty self-explanatory. We want low duration to have Energy Vampire pulse as fast as possible. We did not replace Blessing because Mark for Death caps at 150% strength, so we did not need to use Precision Intensify, so we still have our Heal to Full button. Augmented is good for more strength. Aegis is good to just not die. The only other required thing for this build is any good primer. Kuvudu Core is good. You could use any good primer. You just need to get your target to 10 secs of Viral as fast as possible. This even works on Eximus. The only thing it doesn't work on are things that resist status, like Acolytes and also Demolists. So those were some pretty dumb builds. Uh, if you liked this video, then like and subscribe and stuff. Leave a comment for other frames you would like me to make dumb builds for if you want to see that stuff.